from the bottom. From the bottom. You know we got them. Hello. It's your boys from the bottom. From the bottom. <laughs> Here we go with that, Cal, bro. You need to quit it. From the bottom podcast, hollering at you. So wake up, wake up, wake up. You heard me? Coming at you once again. Second episode of the year. How you feeling about it, Cal? Oh, man. The response on the last episode was outrageous. We got a brother pump. Yeah, man. I ain't talking gas. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Don't forget that we are on SoundCloud. So, you know, if y'all are, if you're on there, don't forget to follow so we can follow y'all back and support y'all as well. Yes, sir. Yes, I D. But, so. uh, yeah, man. Hey, everything going good on this end. I hope everything going good for y'all that y'all tune into this, to the latest episode of today. Um, we more than blessed, too blessed to be stressed. And y'all know the rest. So, like, uh, for real, for real. How you feeling over there? Oh, man, I'm feeling a little hurt today, man. Uh caught myself playing ball yesterday. I did all right. I ain't going to lie, but uh, I'm hurting. The icy hot needs to come quicker than quick. Well, uh, hey, I'm good over here, man. Excited. Man, let me tell I got to get this off my chest. Oh, Lord. Okay, let me hear this. <laughs> All right. Now, I got to say, mm-hmm. my son is, he he really clumsy. Mm. He really clumsy. Now, I'm not afraid to talk about my kids. Mm. You know, I'm going to tell them like it is. I'm going to tell y'all like it is. So, you know, my girl had a game today. You know, as I had a game today, a basketball game. So as as we 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 up in the gym, and he going like up and down the bleachers, right? So Al was there. I told uh, told my partner Al, I said, "Man, just watch. He gonna end up falling. You know, cause that's what he do a lot. He fall wherever we go. Wherever you go. Yeah. Now." We sitting on the bottom row. <laughs> okay. Somehow he fell off the bleachers, hit the ground, Was bounced it like up. Did smack on the ground or fell on his back? On his back? We on the bottom row at the gym. He fell on his back. He bounced up. He said, "I'm okay." The way he said it. That's the first fall. day. <laughs> I'm okay. You know, it's like cool. You know, we got his fall out, his fall for the day out the way. Got it out the way. So, man, you know, we went to. You know, she had a second game. Oh, she had two games. Yeah. Today? Was she tired? She had two out? different spots. Dang. And uh, <clears throat> so you know, we sit down watching the game. My son walking the bleachers. This time he won so lucky. Fell down like. Three, three, like three things, the stairs. Now, I'm all the way on this, like in the middle. He all the way on, like, the right side. Mm -hmm. So, that's all you hear is boom, boom. So, I look down. In my mind, I already knew who it was. But, you know, like, I was hoping it it could be somebody else's kid. I look down. I just see feet in the air. (laughs) So, he bounced up, and then he took off. Mm Mm-hmm. So now everybody looking. And I said, uh, I asked him one question. I said, when he bounced up, did he say, I'm okay? Mm-hmm. The whole crowd said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, that's oh, funny. man. And then, you know, Al was over there because his, his little girl played on the team, too. Yeah. He said, hey, you said that earlier. Yeah. You said that was going to yeah, happen. Man, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, I just got to get that off my chest. It's it's just strange how you know your kids so well that you know what's going to happen way before it happens. Man, that's crazy. I told T.T. that today. I said, bro, don't I tell you what? I told him, look, I've been knowing you since you've been three. 
I said, don't you know by now I know everything you're going to do before you do it. Why do you think I tell you what I tell you ahead of time so you won't do what you want to do? <laughs> you for real, PC? <laughs> oh, he thought you was up here telling jokes? He thought I was He thought you was a comedian? He does what he thought, but sometimes I am. But, you know, it depends on what type of day it is. You know I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Y'all ready to kick this off? We're going to kick this off like that. Yeah, they're going to get it. Let's, Let's go and get it. The LeVar situation. They giving him, what, backlash saying that he ain't a good father because he let his boys play overseas. What you think? Man, do you know how many LeVars it is out there? Yeah. It's not his fault that people keep putting these dang cameras in his face and want to know what he got to say. And want to know what he got going on. Yeah. But then the thing is people hate it. People call him crazy because he say his kids is better than Karen, better than this person, better than that person. My whole take is, listen, if my kid's going against you, I will say my kid's the best too. For real. Like, I could see myself being a LeVar. Cause I mean, his kids not getting in trouble other than the one incident. And I, man, that was a glass. They 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 made that look too. Let me tell you something. This is what I ain't gonna lie. This is what I hate. I ain't mean to cut you off, but this is what I hate about that. They try to make him seem like he was the world's worst child ever, man. Like worst person ever. When there's people that there's politicians that's doing stuff way worse than this, and you don't see cameras in they face and how many uh convicts that they. Got to kill somebody in jail or how much money they laundered. You don't hear them saying all that. But this dude went over there and took glasses. Oh, uh, look at him. He's a thug. I'm like, man, get out of here with that. I mean, the glasses, man. I think the thing <clears> is <throat> that people want to be so PR. You know, they ask you a question about what you think. But they already got the answer of what they think you should, should say, say. Mm-hmm. but if you don't say what they think you should say and you say what's really on your mind they call you crazy they call you crazy like something wrong with you. yeah like you don't supposed to believe in your kids yeah that's crazy so one thing is hey nah man you sp- you yeah like you can't no you can't say your kid that good man you tripping man and you know what and if you think about it that if if you don't give your kid that confidence they won't ever see themselves being better than the best because i at one point uh my oldest he'll be like oh uh obj i'll be like no man it's kb dub bro he was like who that is i'm like that's you you better than odell don't he was like huh no i'm not i'm like you better than him you just don't know it yet and i never heard him say that again kb dub apc you want to play kb dub you don't even say that i'm like that's what i mean you know and that's what lavar is doing man he's putting it excuse me in his boys to have that confidence, man. See, the thing that I hate is he taking out the middleman. You know, well, I don't hate that. I like that he taking out That's the middleman. Middle man. Yep. You know, because what he, what he is doing, somebody else would do it. Yeah. That's not looking out for your family. And you know what that's, and you know what that's, uh, that's incorporating more interest for him. Versus, if you was to have a middleman, that'll be money you have to dish out to another source. But that's income that he's take. Man, he ain't. You know what? It's every the media has made him who he. The media has gave him that platform, and he took yeah, it. Yeah, they did. I he, mean, it's just like the Kardashians. Yeah, you know, yeah. like they didn't make themselves famous. Everybody, Everybody else, else, else made yeah. them famous. Because if you don't tune into their show, they're not gonna blow yeah, up. If you I'm don't saying. buy their products, they're that's not gonna I'm blow saying. up. <laughs> So you can't hate can I don't I don't be hating on nobody, man. Like, and some stuff Lamar do Lavar he say, you know, kind of be off the radio like the comment about LeBron James' dad not being there. You know, he could have he could have oh, held yeah, that. I mean, he ain't had to do a low he, blow like yeah, that. Yeah, he ain't had to do that, but as being a uh, you know, a father and making sure that his kids See, when you when your kid when when you put that confidence in your kids, you put that that driving them to whereas even when they fail they win because when you fail you learn a lesson you learn a lesson to get over that hump that you just try to get over now once you over that hump you got to chase other humps 
So you're gonna keep pushing until you get over the one that you need to get over. If you don't oh. put if you don't put oh, that in your kids, up. man, yes, I'm saying you you're gonna have kids that so they they fail in one thing. Hmm. <laughs> Be like, look, check this out, play. I know you won't get it emotional because you got a, a C plus. Yeah, yeah. But look. Let's get the books. Let's hit it right now, you heard me. Let's get it done. You know, like that, point blank. Or oh, if you didn't make the team, what happened with Jordan? He got cut from his high school team and ended up being one of the greatest players ever in the NBA. See, the thing I'm thinking is the only reason LeVar got so much power is because he say what a lot of people want to say. Yeah. He doing what a lot of people want to do. They you just know, don't know how. But the thing is, he do it with sports. Mm-hmm. Now, if your kid is in school making all A's, you'd be like, man, my kid the smartest in that class. Mm-hmm. Should you be ridiculed for that? Like, should people hate you because you brag? Should a person hate you because you bragging on your kid? Nope. If you believe in your kid, should somebody hate you because you bragging on your kid? Nope. Man, that's something that you put, that's something as a parent that you're proud of. That's what I feel because you like, yo, I worked hard with him. Like, yesterday, seeing the boys play, because me and TT was literally Friday. We were at the gym at 7 o'clock in the morning doing drills, uh, doing basketball drills because they had a game Saturday. And we were doing that one game uh, that we play, like, make three. Got to make three shots in a row, and then you can move, like, all around the world. I had him doing that, and he was making shots consistently. And at the game, he was a little rusty because we didn't have time to warm up. But when he went in there, I said, watch he get a shot. End up getting a shot. Made one. Hit it. Uh, yeah, and he hustles. He be loud. He's that person on the team that brings that energy. Oh, the little Corey Brewer. The little, <laughs> he bring that energy. Corey Brewer look funny as hell on the hey, court. But he be, but that he dude bring, be, yeah, he bring he that be energy, hustling. though. I'm saying, man, I I love a person that hustles. I don't I don't care about their. I like little kids that show emotion. Yeah. Like I went to my first high school basketball game mm-hmm. in forever. I ain't been in one since. Man, one, them little kids, man, little high school dudes were so man, they were pumped up. Were they balling, balling? They were playing. Yeah, they who, was playing. Who was it? Uh, Lakes, Lakes High School against Bayern Lake. And who won? Lakes. Lakes. You, hey, man. Them dudes were talking so much stuff out there. They were so pumped. I got to give it to them. Them dudes pumped me up right there. I say, they pumped me up. They pumped me up to think about running when I play ball. <laughs> so I say, until I get on that court, this is different. Story. <laughs> so I say, did we, hey, hey, hey. I, I just I hope that thought, that thought passed by the time I get out there. He said, man, it's in me. As soon as he wake up, he like, man, shall I wake up? But yeah, I can't. I can't lie, man. I believe in my kids. Yeah, you're supposed to, man. You know, you got to. They could be getting killed out there. I'm still gonna say, hey, you can, you can come back. Yeah, you still the best out there. Yeah, man. And I tell them that the boys, they still be on the court. <laughs> they still be on the court fight. I'm like, bruh. But at the same time, though, they look like two tall twin towers on the court compared to these kids. Yeah. Man, T.T. was going to little dude. Every time the dude dribbled, T.T. stole it from him. If he would have done the drills correctly, like like we would do the drills in practice, he would have made like two, three, four, five layups. Because every time the little kid would dribble the ball, T.T. just went around. Because he looked like a big-ass child. He looked like he was 13 compared to the little kids. And I'm like, and then they had a somebody grandma coach it. <laughs> I'm like, somebody grandma angry. So it smelled like Ben Gay on the sideline. Oh man, no man, Geritol. Geritol <laughs> 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 and Poise. <laughs> oh man, you fools, man. Oh man, but uh, but what about okay, Lavar's situation with him uh. With him sending the kids over to Lithuania. I mean, he ain't the first parent to do that either. Nope. Then people, American kids been going overseas to play ball forever. And even overseas kids been coming to America to play ball forever. Yep, like Ricky Rubio. Wasn't he playing since he was like six, 16? Yeah, Ben Simmons. How old he was playing? 
he he moved over here in high school to play ball uh. from Australia. It's a lot of kids who come over here. Yeah, it's Andrew, just that he got know. the platform, and now everybody want to tell him how to raise his kids. When if his kids don't make it, ain't nobody else gonna tell. Him, ain't nobody gonna help him feed his kids. Nope. Man, to make a platform for to make a platform for the generations ahead is what you do. He has a. If you think about it, I'm pretty sure he's smart enough to know that his kids is going to have to go to school. I'm pretty sure he'll get them some type of school or t- some type of something to where Well, when you say school, what school are you talking about? You're talking about college? You're talking about high school? Well, for, uh, I don't know what's, I don't know what's. a lot of kids don't really need to go to college. Well, and that's true. As long as they graduate from high school, that's fine. You know, because me personally, yeah, if I could have saved money for college, I'd have been. I'll be good. Well, yeah, a lot of people could say. If I the, had you the bad too. part about that is, you go to college, you graduate, and then you don't even work in the field that you graduated for. In I want to know what you think the percentage is of that because you know it's high. That's hard because in school they make you think like when you if you graduate and get this diploma, or this piece of you know whatever piece of paper. You on top of the world, huh? That you, you know, automatically, you know, you the way I was feeling like I'm automatically gonna walk into a job and, you know, automatically get hired. Mm-hmm. When, you know, you got you forget that it's like eighty different million schools who giving out the same thing and you gotta be pretty dang decorated or, you know, know somebody in there to get your yeah, foot in the door. That's true. That's extra true. You know what? I look at it like this, bro. For the people who who's been on a job for years, who have the experience like say for a, a management position. Yeah. These people don't get the position. What end up happening is they train the new managers, which are the people who go to college, have end up having an associates or a bachelors or a masters or whatever and can't find a job, so they have to settle like we we're just saying. They really don't end up in their position, you know, in their uh, field. So these be the ones who just come right on in just because they have a degree with no experience. And I'm training them. Well, they, I mean, I'm not knocking nobody who, oh, who no. got they, the, you know, graduated from college. Not at all. But it's just strange. Like, like what you just said, they go to a job and there's somebody who been there for like, Five years, know the ins and outs, mm-hmm. but he cannot get this job because he don't have this certain college diploma. Mm-hmm. But the person, when he the proved diploma, himself, many times worthy of this position. Yeah, but the only thing holding him back is a college diploma. That three years, and uh, and I was told that with that, it it shows that you're committed, your commitment in uh, continuing to go further. But I look at it like. Well, when your I've job been, history show how committed you are, have you been there a while? I'll be like, yo, I've been for, for five plus years. What do you mean? I'm not committed. I come in to work every day. I do my shift. I know what I need to do. I know this and I know that. So I'm like, how committed do you want me to be? Jeez, Lorenzo. <sighs> well, the bad part is, you know how when you're working and you do so much extra stuff, and then they come to expect you to do this extra stuff. Continue to do that. Without paying you for doing this extra stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, but you're just doing it. You know, someday you be feeling good. You be like, hey, you know, I'm going to go and do this. Mm. But then now they're expecting you to do this extra stuff. Like, they ain't look, never like, talking about no extra pay. Man. That's why people have to learn how to become entrepreneurs. That's true. We need, you know, we... we or at least have a side... A side gig that bring in some extra income. Yeah, because that help out, man. It'd be a lot, be less stressful. You may have to put a little bit more hours in, but it'll help in the long run. It'll help you in the long run. Because you get used to constantly moving, constantly moving, constantly moving, doing something. And to the point where you just find yourself not doing nothing at all. And you're just like, yo, I need to do something. Ooh, Spoken like a real gentleman right there. Look, well, real gentleman. <laughs> oh man, we got so off topic. For real. Let's bounce back. We're gonna bounce We're back. Gonna bounce. What, what's topic number two? Oh, uh is it possible to coach your kids without showing them favoritism? 
depend on what type of parent you are. Yep. It depends on what's your what's your goal when you a coach for this team. Cause like some coaches just want their kids to get the shine, and some coaches just want to win. And I oh. mean, you be able to tell, you know, when it, when you know like when your kid, when you the coach and your kid take. 30 shots and have 10 turnovers, but they still in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, but then if somebody else take a shot, then you going all down, getting on them for missing one shot. How you going to miss that easy layup? Maybe because I ain't get the ball yeah. for, like, the whole first half. I'm rusty. I haven't had a shot since warm-up. Yeah. <laughs> so, y'all dig it, man. So, wait, what kind of, what kind of coach would you be? What do you yeah. think you'll do in that situation? Uh... <clears throat> I actually been to a practice with the boys, uh, and I don't like to show favoritism because I want them to work just as hard as the other people working, and if they messing up, I'm going to give them heat just like anybody else messing up. I, man, Grillum, he was playing, bro, and I always tell him, I say, say, bro, look, check him. I know you are right-handed and you love to go that way, but... Switch it up on a court, bro, because he'll go to the right side, to that corner, and just dribble, 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 he'll pass it out. I'll be like, say, bro, you know, uh, you need to pass the ball, man. Two dribbles, two, three dribbles. If you're not open for the shot and you're set, your feet are set, and you're balanced, if you're not open, pass it out, dish it out. You can dribble and pass it, move around. Don't just go to the one side. I'm like, and you got to start playing defense. You don't like to play defense. DTB hustling. Oh, so he's 100% on offense he's, and 10% he, on defense. Yeah, he's the well, That's curve. rubbing off on a lot of kids these Listen, days. Listen, I don't like that, man. TC, man, TT is the one that he be on the sideline. Let's go. Shoot the ball. Shoot the ball. I'm like, and, and Grillin was like, man, won't you be quiet? I'm like, hey, I looked at both. I say, hey, hey, don't do that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Well, who are you talking to? Though? Both of them. They both looked at me. I was trying to get both of them. Att- they know my yell when I be like, hey, hey. They both looked at me like, eyes got buku wide over. I, I was like, uh-uh, don't do that. So wait a minute. So you didn't want T to sit there and cheer for no, his team? No, They were arguing. Oh. they TT was, uh, no, no, no. You're right. No, correction. I told Grill, I said, hey, hey, don't do that. Let him do what he do. You're supposed to cheer your teammate. Yeah. On. I you thought you were stopping him from cheering. No, 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 man. I told, <laughs> I told Grillum, I said, say, bro, the object is to cheer your, your teammate on even when they're doing bad. Because when you're on the sideline saying, it's all right, man, you just keep shooting. Because that, think about it. That's what we do at the Y. Even though we know they're going to shoot a thousand more times <laughs> and only maybe hit one. But out of all that, you hoping that that confidence build up so they can go ahead and score buckets and feel good. Because some cats, they need a couple shots. To feel to get that confidence, they got yeah. some people that can just start shooting. They got some people that will shoot, miss, 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 then sh- make it, miss, 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 then make you know. But then they got people that need that. Hey man, this could man just keep playing, just keep playing your game, man. You know that's how I am sometimes. To be like man, just keep shooting, just find your rhythm, and that's you know, that's how you supposed to be. That's 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 sportsman. Yeah, but then sometimes you tell them to keep shooting, get their rhythm, then they turn to Kobe. Yeah. And that's Try to when, score 81 points and y'all only going to like nine. And that's when you got to be that teammate. Say, bro, you ain't got to take all the shots wide open now. <laughs> yeah, hey, you got to tell people that at the Y. I be like, bro, bro, I'm right here. Because they got some cast, man. You set a well, screen. Well, you know them people out there trying to get that, YM, that YMCA contract. Man, you know how many... Man, you know how many YMCA ballers we have? YBA. <laughs> YBA leagues, son. Oh, wow. oh. That, that'd that be funny, though. You know yeah. how many? Shh. I don't think I, I, I wouldn't show favoritism if I was coaching my kids' sports. Because I, I need them to move as one. Yeah. I don't just need my kid to try, try to stand out. Like, it don't make sense for your kid to stand out and y'all losing. Yep. Like, they just make you look like a bad coach because you ain't switching it up because you trying to, you want your one kid to shine. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Instead of having this whole team shine together. Yeah, because if you think about it, there's a lot of players that are not as flashy as some kids, but who are damn, who are good. Like, who's a good point guard? Like, a good IQ. Who has good IQ? Steve Nash. Nash. Rondo. Um, Nash, Rondo. I like. Chris uh, Paul. Chris Paul, no, somebody else. You know, somebody that's not so many people. I'd be like, well, well, like Reggie Jackson. I like how he play. I play for Detroit. Yeah, Reggie, I never really watched one of his games. I, your boy Mitchell, uh, that plays for Jazz. Donovan. Donovan Mitchell. That boy is nice, man. He should be in a race for rookie of the year. He is. Is he? Yeah. Who else? Ben Simmons. Is Ben considered a rookie? Yes. He's never played. If you entered your first year. And you come back, you're still considered a rookie because okay. you never really played your first year. Okay. Okay, so he's a rookie. Okay, we got that. Um, ah, ooh. Well, hold up. What time is that? Hello. Hello, come in. Oh, at 25. All right, y'all, we're going to go ahead and shift it off for a little another one. So that's all you got to say about that? Yeah, that's all I got to say. We gonna, we gonna, we ain't do a sports topic in a minute. I know. We you just did two that? of them. We just did two. Hey, but I do got to appreciate y'all for tuning in once again. <laughs> I froze up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I just wanted to tell them thank you. This you thank know, you. for rocking with us. You know, we we really appreciate it. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know what to say. You know, yeah. But you know what? I you do. Know, and if, hey, if you like what you hear, you know, call and let us know. You know, leave a voicemail. Of, you know. Just to even say what's happening. Yeah. Say that you're tuning in. Yeah. Or, you know. I mean, we don't mind playing it on the show. It's all love from this way. Yeah, man. You know, the thing you got to do is hit that number. 253-234-7149. Calling, you can hit that line and leave a voicemail. Love was on you and mine. Bars, bars, man, I don't know bars. why I never remember that number. <laughs> man, well, if you listen to the episode, just keep that part as like a ringtone. Two five three two three four seven one four four nine. Okay, yeah, 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 no, I thought you about to sound like Luke right there, Mike John. Oh, you said like Luke? Yes, on the Luke. <laughs> like, what you got next? What you got next? What you well, got we got to We about to sw- we about to switch the tone a little bit. You heard? So me? no more sports, right? No more sports for the moment. Right, that's wrong. What roll I'm this ball. Let's what is score this touchdown? What are you going to hit this home your, run? <laughs> which one? Oh, go. Go get this goal. <laughs> We ain't gonna do like Seattle. They missed the field goal, so we can't go get that. Saints in it, yeah. Carolina, you out of it, punk bitches. But uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on couples getting married without a wedding? Smart. Well, you mean just not the wedding ceremony? Mm, the ceremony. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Save some money, man. Hey. I mean, because the whole thing is like a wedding is just like a show. That's all it is. You know, you can go just go to the courthouse and just get it done and save yourself some money that y'all can like take a better honeymoon with or pay some bills with or, you know, whatever y'all need to do. Hey, that's the, that's the, that's the smart way to go, man, because after the wedding, man, you think about how much you realize how much you spend on the wedding. Yeah, then some people have some extravagant weddings. Oh man, be like on top of the ring, on t- man. It be but the the hard part is is okay. What would you do? What you mean? Oh, what would I do? Would you still have a wedding? Yeah, no, or, well, because not sometimes that's the girls. That's all girls dream about is having that one magical wedding. And that's so true. if your wife wants this one magical wedding, and you on the other hand didn't want a wedding. What would what would be your what would, what would be your compromise, y'all? Middle point. What would you do? 
You know what? Oh, yeah. I got you, son. This is what I do, and this is actually smart. I would tell her we can do the the courthouse. I said we can save money, but we can do like a a reception or something. So whereas we're celebrating our wedding like that versus we got to get uh we have to have money for the the bridesmaids, the groomsmen to help out with this. We got to find this venue. We got to do pictures. We man, all that adds up. That's 10 G's that can be in your pocket and say you only pay like you can rent out a hall for like two, three hundred dollars. Yeah. With your closest friends, because that'll be the people that's at the wedding. Think about it. So I'm saying, bam, boom, you saved all that money. Now you can put that down, f- and especially if you're young, you can put that down towards having a house or something. That's smart thinking, man. Having a big wedding, sure, it's cool. But I always say if you want something like that, just have people dress up. Dress up and coordinate it to whereas y'all kind of have the same dresses or whatnot. Or just look nice. You can have your girls. He can have his guys. Okay, it doesn't have you, to be something. Let me ask you this. Say y'all 10 years in and y'all want to renew your vows. Now you're more established at this time. I can understand. Would you have a wedding then or no? If you're if you're established and it wouldn't hurt us if we were to have something nice. And that's what she wanted. Yeah, we. It's ten years. It's, it's it's a nice way to celebrate it. You know why not? Why not go for it? Or me being me, I be like, baby, let's just have a bigger celebration. <laughs> <laughs> instead, hey, instead of doing a hall, how about we rent out a school gym? So what if it was the other way around? What you mean? If the guy, if the guy wanted the wedding, then the girl was like, no, let's just go to the courthouse, and do a low key. That'll be a see. That's that's an all around smart move, because honestly, in what rule book it says you have to have this big extraordinary wedding? It's just a picture that's been painted for years and years and years. Sure, back in the days they had ceremonies. It's not like they had to do all this. Well, I guess they had to do the makeup and all this and all that, but it wasn't costing thousands of dollars, man. Stuff you got from other nature. Clothing and cloth and all this and all that. Well, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I just. You know. I just. I just find it. You know. I'm not saying that one day isn't cherishable or is memorable, but if you can save, and you know you don't have that kind of money on the regular, why not save it and do something better with? Because it? some people go in debt. Matter of fact, this, to have a wedding. Matter of fact, because if you think about it, after normally when you do a wedding that big, uh, you want to do a honeymoon and do something nice. So why not have uh, go to the courthouse, have a nice, a little get together, a little reception, and then how about you go taking a little honeymoon somewhere? So do you think a wedding is more for show, for everybody else to see you getting married? Or do you think it's for the person getting married? I think it's all of the above, but at some point it's more so it's more so for the I want to say the tradition of how they do the wedding or how unique they can come with it, you know, with uh what unique designs they have, what type of food they have, how's the uh the bride's dress, what colors they coordinated, how's the chandeliers or the flowers. I think a lot of people go just to see the decorations, basically. The decorations and No, I don't know about that. I don't. You go for the food, huh? <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> well the the food Hey listen man. That's when the food be the best of their weddings. Because, oh, yeah. you know, it got to be perfect. So oh, they yeah. make sure to bring out all the bells and whistles. He said all the bells and whistles. So listen, if you anywhere in our area and you having a wedding or something and you just need, like, some bodies to fill the seats. We're here. I'm your guy. There's no need to fear. 
Cal and Jay is here. <laughs> you know, I just gather. I do got some rules. I got a three plate minimum. If I come. <laughs> Hey, I got a rule. As long as y'all have what some cold drinks, you know what? what? <laughs> a, hey, dude, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's my genes, bro. But I hate drinking water. I hate it. Uh, I you hate about, you. About watch out on them, them pops, man. But this the thing. I don't drink many pops. Well, especially when it's like Coke. What about juice? Um. I drink juice. You gotta be careful now. But, but what see you mean? You what kind of juice? What kind of juice you mean? Yeah, Hawaiian punch. I don't drink Hawaiian punch. That's too sweet. Oh, the apple juice. What kind of apple juice? Orange juice. Is the orange juice too sweet? It got a lot of sugar in it. You gotta be careful, man. You gotta be careful. You out here trying to last. I am trying to last. Yeah, you know, no, that sugar ain't man, good for me. Bro, it's hard growing up. Well, that's because all the bad food, the cheapest. It tastes so good. Man, you ain't lying. You get you a nice frozen Coke, you become slush. Oh. At nighttime, watch some cartoons, eat some crackers, we cheat. No, I'm, I'm like, man, you you're getting hungry for real, <laughs> ain't you, uh, yeah, Playboy? We got some cereals. I'm about to wax tonight. Watch some Shameless and eat some cereals, bro. <laughs> Gee, that's a Sunday night right there. But what you? But that's how you feel it on a wedding. Yeah, man. I mean, I I can go without it because I can think of what else I can invest the money in yeah, that can help for for further our future. Oh, there you go. He got it up. Yeah. Yes, you know, that's all I'm saying. No, that's that's man. That's just overall smart, man. If if we could, if we had the opportunity, yeah. But now that some people be getting looked down on if they don't have a wedding. But see, and and they be like, but then some guys, well, some girls make guys feel bad, cause then they be like, so I'm not worth having a wedding, even though you love me. You know what should be the answer? So then to her that? love be like g- going with the wedding. What? What? what you, you know say? what should the, an- the answer should be? What? Well, well, to be honest with you, there, I, we don't, we don't need. All this extra stuff that we won't even keep. We don't need to invite people that we'll probably only see once in our life. We don't need to be buying all these expensive clothes that we're renting. But you can't rent a wedding dress. No, no. Well, I mean, you probably like, can. Like tux, the tux, and the, uh, it depends, you know, or whatnot. But all that stuff add up, man, and it's like we can do so much more. If we just go to a judge, you know, get cap it like that, and throw a little little get together, boom boom, and we invest. You know, like I said, we invest in the money, and we do some smart with it. Your work being invested in. I don't want to throw all what I think your work into one day, and afterwards I'm reaping. If I want to sow a good seed, I'ma save. I'm going to say for us because it, we a rainy day, you never know what can happen. There may be a flood that comes and knock your house down and all of a sudden you don't have nothing. But just because you saved for that rainy day, y'all good. You straight. So, so I mean, you're you know, saying prepare for the future. You know, you're supposed to. Life, and life is not a life is supposed to. Be, you live life every day like it's your last day because you never know what happened. But at the same time, you want to invest for your kids' kids. All your family. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, you you got that right. But I don't know. With so much pressure now, it's hard to skip. Because people allow the pressure. They allow all that pressure to, oh, man, well, man I need the to do this. Social media is really powerful. making stuff hard man. for people. Social media has become so powerful right now, bro. It's like... You're not certified for anything unless you go through the book or the Instagram. People don't people don't want to get down with you unless you got a, a, a Facebook. Because if you ask the person, they'd be like, you ain't got Facebook? The first thing they say, they'd be like, what you mean? I don't need a Facebook oh, to communicate. Instagram. You ain't got an Instagram? Lame. He's like, well. Well, you know, that's what some people live revolve around right now. Yeah, 
and and you know what man with just with having the access of whatever you want to watch at the tip of your fingers it's so hard for you not to do that i've seen somebody uh and i ain't gonna lie i'm guilty of it too sometimes i'll be on my phone then I'll be like, let me catch a little video, a little highlight right quick. You fall I, asleep. No, you don't fall asleep. You end up watching it for watching videos for so long. You're like, oh, snap, it's been an hour almost to a day. <laughs> because you watch one. Times. I, man, yeah, and it's like, dang, wow. And that'd be that, that YouTube. You'd be on YouTube, man. I'd be watching a highlight. All of a sudden, another one. I'd be like, oh, snap. I need to see that game. And then they have an old retro game of Kobe dunking on somebody or something. Then they got the crossover. And then they like, oh, check out this podcast. And this. I'll be like, yo. Man. I'll be like, I got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. That's our thoughts on that one. That's, yeah, man. I say for anybody, if if y'all are going, if anybody's going through this right now, you can always call and give us, you know, your intake on it or, you know, take the advice or just let us know. Just let us know. I just said, just let us know. Oh, man. You know what? What? Hey, man, we need to do. Go. It's that freestyle poetry time. It's that freestyle poetry time? Yeah. Oh, you want to do the freestyle poetry? Now, I can put the beat in it already. On it so we can rap the beat. I mean, we can rap while we hit a beat. No, I could do acapella. You want to go acapella? Oh, you can put the you can put the beat in later. I can I can. Do I mean, that. whatever easier for you. What you want to do? Hey, you want to put the beat in right now? Man, anything easy. For put the me. beat in. Let's try it with the beat. Let's take, try it with the beat. That's gonna be another fifteen minutes. All right, we can do that. Well, I don't know. If we going fifteen minutes? Like, we're not making a CD. Uh. Let me see. Hold up, wait a minute. We just had to take a quick break in between this episode to let y'all know that y'all can leave a voicemail for us if you want to come in on a show or you know just talk to us and leave us a message. The number is 253-234-7149. Special shout out to our networks that we're on. Check them out. They got some awesome episodes and shows and DJs. Um X Squad Affiliate, Stand Up, Fat Lows Radio. You can also catch our show on iTunes. We on iHeart Radio, Spreaker, and your favorite podcast apps. Also, don't forget if you got kids who watch YouTube videos, check out that kids D A T Kids YouTube channel. And if you like to listen to some great music, check out my co-host Jr. Dot Five Zero Four SoundCloud page. Now back to our regular scheduled program. Mm. Hot fire flames. Check it. Marriage. <clears throat> uh, it's wonderful. It's good and good. Check it. Uh, marriage. People raising carriage. Talking about they all together. It's marriage. More than a year. Talking how they embarrassed, but they can't be no more because they married. It's crazy what you're seeing, how you carry yourself or why your your wife or your husband. Spending more years, more bands than you love it. And I don't even understand. Love them skinny chubby. It's the W in it. I mean the will. Keep him if you feel how I feel. But nah, I did. I don't even know why I'm even rapping with this. I ain't even on subject, but I'm laughing at this. You're killing if you're killing. I ain't making this magic. If you love it, I can go and I can go and let it happen. Man, I'm a roaster. I'm a killer. I'm a savage. Got them all speaking high. Dilly, dilly, lie, nil it. Now I don't know what he trying to say But I'm here to make your day Be the key where it was marriage Like Cameron, the horse and carriage mm. Standing up um, on the podium uh, said it. Pastor giving us words of sodium uh, Salty I said sodium <laughs> <laughs> I know, if I said salty Up on the podium uh. I watched too much wilding out So now I think I know what this stuff about uh, the key word is marriage, though. Uh, yeah. And my wife, sometimes she have to go. Where? But I dedicate my life to her. Uh, I don't know what else for her. 
Uh, we sit back, we do this thing. We like a team, so we both hang. Check it. Ooh. We both bring in the change. Record label come signing. Raise a family, man. <laughs> I should get signed. This is my first time freestyling. I'm not doing bad from what I can hear. But I know that I could probably drop a tear. And I ain't even spreading fear. But you know that, yes, I'm here. Man, that boy, Cal. What's going to be your artist, your rapping name, son? That's what I want to know. God just call you Cal? No, you call me MC Ice Bucket. Sunset, MC Ice Bucket. MC Man, Ice yeah, they caught me off guard. He said, do it with the beat. Let's do it with the beat. I thought hey, about rap, it, rap, son. Rapping ain't easy to sing. It's fun, though. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. That was kind of fun, though. I ain't gonna lie. That was kind of fun because some words I ain't know what you're talking about. Who, me? I ain't know. You. <laughs> <laughs> that other one, we had to delete that one. So I said, man, hey, I've been watching Shayla's too long. So yeah, pick man. Up some stuff. I've been watching Wild and Out too long. They be on there. You know what? They do be on there. It be funny, though, somehow. But they yeah. do rehearse it, though. I thought they it was do? literally free. They, oh, it's not a lie? They actually go and rehearse it. They rehearse it? Yeah. What they going to say on the show? Yeah. Oh, I thought they were off them, the top of the dome. No, I seen them one time rehearsing it. Oh. That make a lot of sense. Yeah. Because they come on cue. Beca- because, honest, well, I, there's people that can flow like that, like flow like that, but at some point you got to have some type of uh, rehearsal. But if you did so long, it should come natural. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah. I mean, if I did this, but I'm saying, if I kept freestyling by next week, I'd probably have a record label deal. Mm. Man. I'm just saying. Yeah, I had to speak. Took him out his element for a second. <laughs> he got me. He called I, me off I, guard I called right him off guard. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And just so y'all know, I just came up with that beat not too long ago. So right if before you the want podcast. It, contact JR.504. If you want it, contact me at JR. Wait, no. Not yet. You changed your name? No, well, they, they can't contact me at GR.504 at Gmail because I don't have a Gmail with that. Oh, well, contact him at from the bottom 504 at Gmail. But let's keep this party rolling. Let's the keep next it time. rolling. On to the next one. All for the single ladies and fellas. Check this out. Check this out. How long should it be to your boyfriend slash girlfriend or person you're just dating? Meet your kids. What's the Ooh. time limit? That should be. Uh, I say probably six months. Six months. Six to eight months, probably. But six. it's hard these days. Yeah. Because I say well, okay. how? Because if you always got your kids, that that be that could be a challenge. If you always have your kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know. Ah, that's a hard one. But sometimes you, you got to keep them away from people because you don't know this person. Yeah. You know, I just hear about this lady killing this, this her boyfriend's son because they got in an argument. And he wasn't nothing but like six years old. Mm-hmm. She, she shot him. She shot him. Or this uh, other dude, this lady, who uh, met this guy while he was in jail. He got out, got mad at the um, mad at the girl, the the woman daughter, who was like probably nine or ten, mm-hmm. because she said you just using my mama. He ended up killing her and the mama. So that's what I'm saying. Like speaking true words. Yeah, these days, you. You just can't introduce anybody to your kid. You got to watch out because there's some dumb people out there. Man. What you think? Like how long you how long what's your timetable? Uh I don't I don't know. I, I want to say you can feel off, you can feel a vibe off people, but sometimes that that vibe can be deceiving. That vibe can be deceiving cuz uh I ain't going to lie, uh it was maybe a month or two before I met the boys. About the month, I think it was Do like you think a month. That was enough time. Um, I think that was enough time. I guess it kind of went off how I was. 
but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it was the vibe I gave off because I, there's some people that are cool and I actually know somebody who's, um, her boyfriend killed her son. Yeah. He don't talk about something. He don't know what happened. I don't know how the bruises got on him. And that, that'd be the saddest thing, man. The kids, it's just innocent. They're just there hoping that, you know, their parent can bring somebody home that's legit and that will be like, you know, I want to raise you and love you like your like your biological. But man, it's hard to establish that and people want to go in relationships thinking that oh, it's cool just to go up in a relationship with somebody with another kid and be like, "Oh yeah, I'm taking uh I stay with my boyfriend and his son. I love him so much." But all of a sudden end up on the news killing him but because he said you can't cook. The thing I think is sometimes that some people get in relationships with the person and not the but kid. But they do not want a relationship with, with the, the kid. kid. Yeah. Even though they come as a package deal. Yeah. And then so early. Why have people watch your kids so early, though? Yeah, now that's the crazy part right there. Um, you like, look, I just got to call off work. But then, I don't know, like, it got to be, I think it's hard these days and times to not have the person meet your kids. Why you say that? You know, because y'all probably spend a lot of time together. And then, like, what will you do when the person is around with their kids? Do you just not go around that person to, like, their kids are gone? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, I guess I'm just thinking, like, if I was single, what would I do? Yeah. And I don't... I just can't see them introducing my kids to nobody for a long time. Yeah, that's true. Because you just don't want to be shit be like, oh, this is such and such. Daddy's friend. And behind, you know how you see on some movies, the uh, the kid be trying to tell a parent, Daddy, Mommy, this man is crazy. This woman is evil. And he be like, no, nah, she's a sweetheart. Yeah. And he be like, you be the damn devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'd be like, that's what I, that's what you don't want, man. You come home, so uh, you'd be like, baby, can you just watch it for a couple hours? Sure, honey. Then then turn around, man. This little sweetheart's gonna have a daddy yeah. day. Yeah, her eyes start turning turn, red. Uh huh. Then turn back around. Okay, honey, love you. Have a good day. But then, Close how the do you? How would you know when you trust the person to be around to keep your kids? Cameras. Though? Yeah, but camera ain't gonna save it when they want to do something to your kid. I have it on my phone live. So you gonna be at work just staring at your phone eight hours show? No. So what you gonna do? Cameras. What the- <laughs> 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 oh man, I, I I I don't know. I don't think I throw my kids out. I don't think I'd throw them out to the wolves like that. So That's what I'm early. saying. Like, how long? I don't, some, I, I don't know if it depends. It has to be something where I can see my kid. It's okay with the person. Like, it has to be some type of, um, well, I don't I don't know. I, yeah, see, I just the wouldn't know. Part, like, I, that trust part of somebody watching your kid. Yeah, because now I think about it, you can't even take your kid to the nursery. Well, as having somebody that you've been knowing not for so long to be like, hey, can you watch him for a little bit? I got to go here. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Man, this about to be random, but on kids and single parents. Have you ever seen The Shy? Shy Town? No, just Shy. I think it's The Shy or Shy. It's on Showtime. I thought you were talking about Shy the Singles. No, 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 no. It's the uh it's, it's a, on Showtime. It's on Showtime. Oh, that's it's the rich series. people network. I don't watch it. It's it's on a uh, series. It probably be on uh it should be on Netflix. The Shy? I think it's the Shot. But it's The a, Shot? No, the Shy. The Shot. Like Chicago, the Shot. The so Shot. So CHI. CHI. No, I ain't even hear that. Man, it's it is a good little film, man, and uh on the the, the second episode the kid, I'm, I'm gonna spoil it. So if you listen to it, close your ears, cause I th- I thought it was a it was a man made motion right here. Um, the kid, 
his mom's told him straight up because he has the dude has I think maybe I think he has one kid. I heard them say something about he has a couple other kids, but this chick dropped her baby off to him. So his son, the kid, the the chick just dropped him off, left him, and he don't know where she at. She ain't answer her phone or nothing, right? So he thinking that he about to go to work when his mama, uh, you know, after she just got off of work, and he thinking that she about to watch the kid. She like, oh no, this your responsibility. I ain't tell you to get in that girl draws. I told you what not to do, and you wanted to go do it, so this your responsibility. So she ain't let him. So she didn't watch the kid. She left out the house. And he couldn't work one day. And, uh, yep, he couldn't work because his owner wouldn't let, uh, his boss wouldn't let him keep the baby in the office. Yeah. And, uh, he went to the one nursery, but it was full. He had a two-month wait. So he took the baby to the park, and the baby was just, "Ah, ah." he left the baby in a swing, and he hopped the fence, and he went, he ran, and the only thing he could hear was his baby crying. So, "Ah, ah." then all of a sudden, he... He was like, man, I can't do this, man. I can't do this shit, man. And and uh, all of a sudden, it was like he had to make a decision real quick. Because it, he was like, I can either end this and run off. Or he said, man, I just got a face. He said, I can't bear just leaving him like that. And, you know, he went back across the street, man. He was like, man, you know what? I'm sorry. Dad ain't going to ever leave you like that again. And he was with him the rest of the day. Came home late. And his mama was, and, you know, he apologized to his mom's. He was like, I'm sorry, Mom. You know, I'm I'm trying. And she was like, I know. But she still meant it. She was like, I ain't going to let you. Um, Drop the baby uh, off you, on I'm me. I'm just, yeah, they, they they live together now. He lived with his mama. But she was like, I ain't just going to let you drop the baby off on me like that. Well, it's hard, man, when yeah. you just drop, you know. Yeah, and the parents, they get off of work and they, they expecting the rest. Not to watch your kids. <laughs> man. So. Well, even if, well, what if you was retired? If. If, cause I can't even speak on that because that's what my mother in law do. But it's she was like, oh, I don't mind. I can see if it's you know they don't mind watching the baby, but just pointing the baby off on them, that's a different story. Because if we have to, I'd be like, well, Megan, look, you know, until then we we'll see what we can get. But they they don't mind watching. They they prefer watching them, and it, it helps a lot. But without that, without that type of help. Having somebody actually watch the baby and don't mind him versus just throwing a baby on somebody. Oh. Man, because how would you feel, though? You just, because I told the boys, I wish you would talk about some. Uh, IPC, uh, I'm about to bring the boys over. Be like, what? Me and your mama about to be in this house. We about to get it in. I'm going to need you not to come here. (laughs) I'm going to need you not to come to this house with the kids. Uh Uh-uh, uh-uh. My mojo is not being broke tonight, player. (laughs) No oh, man, but be like, look, player. So you ain't gonna sacrifice. be one of those grandparents who is. Uh, I you See, ain't. Just you stay to... there now. No, you hey, I now. love my grandbabies, bro. You gotta think about it. I'm gonna love my grandbabies, but you just not from gonna... a distance. No, I'm saying I love them from a <laughs> distance, and in a day, I'll love them. I'll I'll love them. Period. But at the same time, so after eight o'clock, the love is gone. Sometimes, hey, I don't mind you know keeping the kids. Why, you know, well, you know, my kids, why they go out, they enjoy themselves. You know, I don't mind it every once in a while, but this is not about to be no regular. Hey, PC, you can so, watch okay, the kid. Let, I'm going to hang you, out. Let me ask you this right here. Okay. They dropped the, dropped the baby off, mm-hmm. grandbaby off. Mm-hmm. They say, uh, hey, Pop, I'll be back at three. Pick a, pick a little junior, all right? Mm-hmm. He said, all right, be here at three. Three comes around. They not here. Blowing their phone up. You calling their phone. <laughs> four comes around. <laughs> oh, they man. not they not answering. I'll call it they pop in at like six thirty. Uh, okay. Now what you gonna do the next time they be like, Hey Pop, I'm be here at two o'clock. What you gonna do? How many chances do they get to be late? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be like, I might not be home. So if I ain't there at two o'clock, don't be mad. <laughs> oh, there you go, do that. Be like, hey, remember you were supposed to be at my house at three o'clock the last time you brought the kids over, and you ain't come till six. And I had my bingo appointment and massage afterwards. My bingo appointment. My bingo appointment and my massage class, and you ruined that for me. So 
get it how you live. <laughs> it ain't gonna... So how many chance they get? Oh man, I, I don't know, man. Cause I never, you know, I never know how it'll be, you know, once I get to that age. But I, I'm gonna tell them straight up: look, you ain't just gonna pawn your kids, homie player. You just ain't gonna be like here. Watch them. No, no, I'll be like. Well, hey, you know, that's because you say that you gonna be in there on your little recliner. But that ain't what Mama gonna say. Well, I'm hey. gonna say, bring my grandbaby over. Oh, that's fine. I'm gonna have my man cave and I'm gonna escape. <laughs> be like, remember, Grandma said bring her grandbaby yeah, until over. she leave. Oh, <laughs> oh no! It ain't just gonna be. I can see she be like, "Hey, baby, I gotta go run to the store or something." And normally, but see, I wouldn't mind it because I am who I am, so I wouldn't mind, you know, keeping my grandkids. But you just shifting them off, man. You out your rabbit mind, man. Because I know some people be like, "Hey, I wonder how many grandparents actually keep it real." It be like. I'm tired of watching your kid. Man. Man, I be the way our schedules are, son, I be like, yo, I just don't want it. That's why sometimes I be like, nah, we're chill. I like to go see the parents, the in-laws. Be like, nah, we're chill because I'm pretty sure they want some quiet time. But sometimes it be so quiet, they call us. Be like, y'all coming over for dinner? I be like, what y'all got? <laughs> You know, because they miss that. It be so, they're so used to the noise. So, yeah, you get used to having a lot of family around. Yeah. I guess it do get lonely when there ain't nobody around. Especially when you're... But you, you, do get, you do get to keep a clean house, i tell you that. Man, until the kids come over. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. But uh, we're going to roll to this last topic yeah, before man. we wrap this one up. How old? This is this If you is, made it this far, we appreciate you. Yeah, that cause that freestyle session was Yeah, he messed up big time. Man. I erased the other part so nobody know that might be in the hidden episode or something. Should have like the Lost Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> this last one goes out to all of I ain't gonna even just say all the fellas. <clears throat> this goes out for all the ladies too. So it's gonna be a uh a, a and so ladies, how do you feel after you get your hair done? And fellas, how do you feel after you get your hair cut? Oh boy! That, <laughs> oh man, my mama got her hair done faithfully every two weeks. Every two word rain, see or snow, man. You all see when that water coming down? She turned to like a little ninja, a mini ninja. Water can't touch that. No, hair. water can't touch the hair. Oh man! But uh. Hey man, that, that that haircut had you feeling like a million dollars, man. Listen, when you give up all hope, that haircut <laughs> brings it back. Hey, yes indeed, man. I mean, you walk in there, man. You know, you be all depressed, and you know, you be feeling all sad and looking man, all rough and stuff. Look. And as soon as that barber hook you up with that crisp line, mm. you look in the mirror. It's like. The clouds go away when Man. you walk out that barbershop. Yo, it's the like the sun come out. You know, everybody, everybody looking at that nice, that nice cut when you walking through. Mm -hmm. That uh, your clothes could be dirty and everything. That but that cut, clothes. that <laughs> cut. <laughs> ain't nobody worried about the clothes. Yeah, ain't nobody worried about the clothes. Oh, you make man. sure they see that hair, dude. You know how you be walking through the store, flinging your hair around. Mm -hmm. You know, hey man, that's how it is. It be like that's how it is. I ain't gonna lie, when I had my dreads. And I get them straight up uh, twisted, twisted, and I get that lining. Boy, I put I take them and put in a ponytail. I put them in two ponytails because they were long. Man, I felt like any interview I went on, I were conquered. Even for like a yoga instruction, I don't instruct and I don't even do yoga <laughs> just because of how fresh that haircut made me feel. Like nah, I get like a little frohawk. You heard me. Man, just the other, just yesterday, man. Before I went, I was like, "Dude, man, I'm busting, man." I'm like, I yeah, just look I was gonna like, tell you that. Hey, I look like I had the Christmas, uh, the aftermath of Christmas. Like when people stress so I think much, like the aftermath of Armageddon. No, but yeah, man. you go ahead. Oh, of Armageddon? No, because which one is more frightening, after Christmas or Armageddon? Because you know, after Christmas, normally the modern day Christmas shopper spends a lot of money on Christmas, so they look stressed out after Christmas. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know nobody stressed out after Christmas because they glad it's over with. No, because of all the things that they had to get in and then the last minute Christmas shopping. Hmm. You be look be looking stressed. Man got all the hair on the face. The ladies come up in there. Some of them be coming there so with goatee. So you saying that the person after Christmas is more stressed out than I'm again? Man, that's how some people make it. <laughs> <laughs> Some people act like Christmas is the last damn, it's the last holiday of the year. But some people, man. Sure, the most expensive, though. And you know what? And I don't even know why. Why is why do we go overboard on Christmas? Even though we like extra off topic and you yawning, but for real. I why? can't believe you just said that. Extra quick and try to fill that in right quick. Yeah. <laughs> you just sat up here and yawn like 20 times. Man, it's because. It's contagious. Man, it do be contained. Yeah, ooh. Yeah. See? What the? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all wasn't supposed to hear that. Oh, man. But, man, but, yeah, man, that haircut, man, it makes you feel like any interview you go on, you can conquer. I mean, like, even even when women get their hair do. Oh, they get their hair They be nice. looking rough, but once they come out there, salon, boy. Ooh. You can't tell nothing. They're straight runway models. Hey, hey, whatever, wherever they walk, it's like to them, it's period. It's like the yellow brick road. It's like they walking and they got like people behind them playing like second line music or something. <laughs> oh, oh, these, uh, that's funny though. Yes. <laughs> Somebody roll out a red carpet for them. So they you know, that's the door. first thing people see when they see you though. Yeah. You know, they be like, they don't know you, but they're like, hey, nice cut. Mm-hmm. Who cut you? Yeah, you like, man, that's one crisp line. Like, yeah, man, you know, my, my barber do his thing. That's all people, I got to say. Some people, you be like, hey, was your barber doing tre- Tetris or what, what, what was going on? <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember when I got a cut. I called the cut 50 Shades of a Cut. Because this barber had so many hair designs in my head, I had a big, I had a big bush, and I told him. Were you going to a haircut show? No, no, that's what it felt like. I felt like he, I could have been more than one exhibit, (laughs) like one portion of my head could have just been turning it. I'm like, dude, ain't no. I mean, it was it was wild and wacky, but I just had a trim. One side I had a fade. So you had the Bobby Brown. Dude, no check. No, not even the Bobby. It's like, it, like at the slope. It wasn't even a slope, bro. Oh. It was like the sides. One side was faded. One side was tape. One side was the skin slash taper. Then one side was like a fade slash bowl. And then the back was man. It was see now all, you got to think of the positive in that. It, there was no positive. It was a positive. I didn't. You had a variety. You said I how many, how many people got, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 hey let me how get many the variety, a variety in uh, their hair. Man, how would that sound though? So you just I mean, go you to could your take barber. you could take two pictures, two different sides, and they'd be like, oh, Man, when did you take that one? They'd be like, Cause you didn't have the same haircut in the last one. But the thing is, it didn't feel it felt like more than it felt like more than ten haircuts in one. Because, like I said, my my bush is like a sponge. So, did you pay him extra? Pay him extra? It feel like 10 haircuts in one. Dude. Think about it. How many people can say that? Think about it. I had a ninth. You know what? I had like them old school bush fades. You, you know, like C.J. McCullum have? Like the, that. He, he looked like a pastor when he get a fresh cut. One cut he had, he looked like a straight reverend. <laughs> Like old snap. Well, sure, he probably can't be one. He probably can't be one, son. But nah, man. Oh man, that's funny. But I did not feel like I didn't feel like a hundred. But I didn't even feel like the amount of money I paid for my haircut. That's how bad it was. I didn't feel like I just felt broke after that. I was like, I just did better just lining it up myself and calling it a day. Well, yeah, I was gonna tell you that, man. And get, I, dude. Hmm? Guess how much the haircuts are? Twenty dollars a piece. No, they went up, man. Oh, thirty. No way, dude. No I, way. TTS is twenty five. You over not no? It dude, wasn't no thirty. Mine's is thirty. God, that's what happened when you get those uh celebrity haircuts. 
No, son. I just got the regular. I guess is where you go. So you mean to tell me your barber didn't, didn't hook you up as as long as you've been coming there? Man. Well, no, nah, he can't hook you up because that's his that's his that's his bill money. So yeah. Man. Dude, that joke. I'm like, I'm looking at the price. I ain't have my glasses on first off, so I'm thinking it's cheaper than what it is. I put my glasses on and I had to. I looked at it. I'm like, wait, let me get a little closer. Man, I'm like thirty dollars, dude. I remember when haircuts was like seven dollars. That's down south, though. Yeah, that's true. Dang, I, I can't see myself paying thirty dollars, dude. That was a let down, man. Now I'm like, yo. How much you pay for a cut? Who? You. Oh, yeah, I pay something. How much? Yeah, no, probably 10. 10? Where you go? You know, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll be around. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it was uh, 10, but now it went up to like 20. It depends, 15, between 15 and 20. Yeah, you got a different ball bazaar. Yeah, depend on what I got to get done and how quick I got to get done. Like, if I got time, <laughs> I go to one barber. But if I need to, like, make the call to go straight to the chair, mm-hmm. I go to another barber. Yeah. So I can just go in and out. That's what I need. Because, man. Well, I'm going to have to hook you up. Yeah. He stay okay. around here in Auburn. Yeah, because that, 30, that $30 broke me, son. I'm like, dude, that's how much it is for gas. And these haircuts last you for, like, You could have got a haircut in a value meal. Man, I could have did that and seen them with well no move is damn near twenty dollars for one person, nah. You're right. <laughs> but I think it's that time everyone. Thank y'all for rocking with us. Rocking. We with have the come best. to an end. Yeah, dog. Two thousand eighteen. It's her. Just be ready cause your boys are coming. Ready like Freddie. If you listen to the last episode, we appreciate you once if you listen to any episode, matter of fact. We appreciate you a lot. Man, like for real, for real, though. And we thinking of uh, what should we do for our one-year anniversary. We still thinking, but hey, if y'all got some ideas, shoot them our way. And uh, I'm going to give y'all the inspirational quote before I let JR take y'all on out. Nothing... <laughs> Wait, wait, what? Wait. Nothing. <laughs> I got tongue tied. <clears throat> Nothing <laughs> will work unless you do. That's from the great Cal. I came up with that fresh off top of the dome. <laughs> wait, nothing will what? Nothing, nothing will, will work. work unless you do. Hey, that's true story. Unless you got battery well, for it, right? It was a remix from Maya Angelou. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to let JR take y'all on now. Thank y'all from me to you, to you, you, and you. And you, too. And you. Go and do your thing. Check it out. Oh, I should like to thank everybody who was listening. And uh, everybody who tuned in. And everybody who put their earphones on and was bopping their heads. <laughs> nah, hey, you know, we want to thank y'all all day, every day, you know. Coming through, tuning in, showing love, spreading love, sharing the, com- uh, sharing the episodes, commenting, you know. Uh, correcting, correcting our mistakes, especially when it comes to... Uh, any facts like Esther on Rosewood? <laughs> Thank y'all yeah, for that show. Get on you, boy. I I didn't mean I I don't know why I said Esther, but it was the moms from Good Times. What was her name? I forgot. No, I, don't know. I forgot her name, but I should know. I know as much as you. I watching, should. Uh, yeah, I should know. Dang. Yeah, and see, but uh, it was the mother off of Good Times, so. I want to thank y'all for that correction because it something didn't feel right. It didn't sound right. I told you you was wrong. You, you ain't saying that. You went along with it. You're like, oh, that's the word. And I hey, don't be bringing up old stuff. Let's keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, uh, we appreciate y'all. You heard me. Y'all would keep us moving and pushing. Y'all would keep the lights on. 
So y'all would keep the lights on. It may be coming. It may come to that one day. Well, hopefully that'd be nice. That would be nice, man. Shoot, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have to worry about saying I gotta go to work today unless it was downstairs in my office. I can dig that. The few like a shovel. There you go digging a china. You but, go um, cool, Ken. <clears throat> we want to give thanks and shout outs to uh, Fat Lowe's Radio, X Squad Affiliate affiliates. Stand up. Um, all networks, all social media, all platforms in which we are step we're on. Oh you know, man, we, we we shout y'all out, especially Twitter and um, everybody who follow our Facebook page. Thank you. Yeah, thank Hit y'all. that share button and uh, yeah. get, let's get some more people up in there to let's share get with some us. More, you know, the J R O O J R dot. Make this announcement. Announcement oh. is in the process. <laughs> Of starting the IG page. Uh, yes, sir. That will be up in 2019. That'll be up 2019. Wait, what year we in? 2018. Let's <laughs> 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 say 2019. <laughs> oh, man, so tired of cheese. It's about to be 1 o'clock over here. So. But, nah, but one more thing. Um, <clears throat> this upcoming 21st of January. Your boy JR.504 will be gracing the stage once again with his presence at Studio 7 at 7 o'clock. So if you have time, go out and support. Tickets are on sale as of now. If you're uh, in the Seattle area. If you're in the, yep, make that clear. If you're in the Seattle area, I posted it on a page. Uh, are you going to put up a video? I need to put I'm uh two out of three I'll go live again. Oh, but what about the people who don't see it on live? How would they be able to see your performance? I'll share it. What if they don't have Facebook? I'll share it. Some other and way. There you go. <laughs> we'll find a way so you can see it. I'm more most likely everybody in the world has Facebook. But um Yes, and and uh, I may be performing with the wife again. We're not too sure at this moment. I have to talk to her agent and uh, a friend of mine, Adriana. You know, shout you out for uh, sub Adriana for for hitting the stage. You heard me. Wasn't that the name of the girl in Stallone? Adriana. <laughs> I think. Yeah, so. go ahead. Go wait, ahead. Wait, Adrian. It was Adrian. 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 That's how you said it. <laughs> okay But uh You know Shout Adrienne out To her Because that girl Can sing her Ass off yo And and that's no lie I ain't gonna lie Peanut sat here And watched her sing The, the whole studio session That we had And I was surprised And he, he just kept moving But uh You know We wanna thank y'all Once again Y'all you know Go get them tickets If you can make it Uh You know that's what's up. If you can't, I'm not even mad, but you can always still, you know, uh, purchase a ticket or, you know, whatnot. But, you know, show support to your locals. You heard me? If not, that's also cool because guess what? You will be hearing your boy on your local radio station. You already know how I go. Cal and Jay, Ed Day. Come!